Welcome to the 79th episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half of your hosting team. And lordy, lordy, this woman is turning 40. Fuck yeah, she is. So by the time everyone listens to this, I will have entered my 40th year. So for all of those who knew me between 20 and 40, if you thought that was fucking wild, buckle up. (laughs) So I am Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada, also known as That Bitch from the Horror for Dummies podcast. (laughs) You mean That Bitch. (laughs) Also, one-fifth. Of the ladies from the Slumber Party Massacre podcast. Also, one of Scott's future grooms persons when he gets married in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, that's for you. Oh my God. Also, a new auntie to the beautiful sweet Edmund who came into the world two weeks ago. My friend Anne had her baby. Baby and mom are at home and doing well. And so far, I've fed him, and I haven't had any baby horror movies happen yet, so there's that. That's good. Right? And with me, as always, is... Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek, in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way Galaxy. Fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hotty, a.k.a. the Golden God, a.k.a. Spanky, a.k.a. That Traitor. <laughs> I swear to God, your intros, I get so awkward because I like look around because I heard this so many times. I don't know what to do. I'm like, mm-hmm, just waiting for it to be done. Just waiting for it to be done. <laughs> and as we all know, I never finish. No, man. No, finish her is not a thing for Sky. For Erica, it's like, please. And I'm just kidding, Erica. I'm just kidding. Not really, Erica. If you need help, just reach out to me. Um, <laughs> actually, Hopefully, all comes to fruition, and Scott and Erica come up here in May, hopefully, fingers crossed, and uh, we're going to go on a ghost tour. I got tickets for us to go, and Scott and I went on a ghost tour with this company, which is where you all heard about our exciting adventure in downtown Hamilton. Uh, George will be joining us, and he said to me, will it be as exciting as you and Scott's tour? (laughs) I said, I don't know. That was I was special. Only Scott and I get these very special times together when we get together. Um, I don't know. Maybe Erica will be the calming influence. Maybe we won't see like a, a Canadian protest about vaccines, <laughs> fast and furious driving, um, crazy. Like, didn't you saw a guy, two guys fucking in the window? We both saw that at New Year's one year you were here. Yeah, I didn't we, see anybody fucking, but we did see. I thought see, we saw like, two guys banging each other. I thought that's what we saw. Okay, I maybe see, I just saw that. You may have seen that, but I just seen. A guy standing at the giant, like, body-sized window, just butt-naked way up high. Like, and just seeing his oh, yeah. dong flopping about. It's dong. And then the fight between homeless people that are – individuals that are homeless that are – that almost occurred. Yeah. Um, that outside of a restaurant we went to. Scott and I just – you know what? I, I had an expired license, and Scott had to buy me a drink. <laughs> like, we just have a series of events that occur – when we're together. Um, the so adventures I can almost, never stop. <laughs> like when we went to that haunted house and, <laughs> and like I screamed and a bunch of shit scared Scott. And then we, oh man, that was fun. When we went through the haunted manor, that was a good time. That was a that really was good time. That was annoying October. all the fucking uh, haunters. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh man, I, I can't wait to hang out again. We always have such a good time when we hang out in person. And I'm so fucked when you and Erica meet because I'm just gonna be like, oh god, I'm in trouble now. Oh no, nah, I'll be nice to you. She's, you know, as much as I tease you. Actually, I don't make fun of you that much in person. I think no, I do it more. Person. No, like in person, I, I don't think we're we're too busy like judging other people and <laughs> too busy talking about like life and other such things and i got i want to come out this summer for run fest um if you and erica are going i think that'd be a fun thing to do oh there's not a question of 
if we're going. It'll just be when. Okay, so we'll pick a weekend then. And then hopefully for your birthday, maybe both of you can come back out here again and we can do some haunts. Um, that would be a lot of fun. Hell yeah. So we can get together three to four times a year. I feel like that is pretty good, honestly. Right. Like that's realistic, um, just with the lives and the four hours isn't that bad, but it's enough time. I think if we lived in the same country, it wouldn't be as bad. But like there's a crossing the border, there's a financial piece to it. I can only eat five things because I have celiac disease. It's a whole it's a whole thing. Yeah, but I was just saying, you know, I got like for the four hour drive or whatever, if I'm coming to see you, I got to take the time off to make sure I have yeah. enough time to get out there. Because for one, I just hate driving at night if I don't have to. Yeah. Well, you always get here at a good time, though. And we always yeah. go like we do our thing when you come up here, we go for sushi or when I come to see you, we go to. Oh, my God. I can't remember the name of the restaurant. I want to call it Breezy Corners, but that's not what it's called. The Breast Place that's near your house. Oh, your parents uh, kinda, go there all the time. Uh, country Carriage. Country Carriage. We go to the coffee shop that we both dig. We judge the mall that we <laughs> we walk through to see if it still looks like it's being used in Dawn of the Dead. Yep, um, remnants of the mall. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's a lot of though. I've never been to that expert, that amazing Mexican restaurant. Four years later, I've known you, and I haven't gone to that. We, we got to do that. You and yes. Erica will have to go out. You could drive. Oh, of course. <laughs> Erica and I can enjoy some margaritas together. Well, I'll say it's not far from my house. Like once again, about fifteen minute drive. So. Oh, could we take a cab? Is there cabs near you? I'm sure we could find like an Uber or something, maybe. But... Uh, I would pay for an Uber for us. If if you were going to drink with us, I would for well, sure. Well, if anything, I would probably just have one margarita because that's, you know, that's fine for me. Oh, you're no fun. I would like us to get a happy little buzz. Maybe we'll go to the sports bar and get a happy little buzz. That Not could... hammered, but happy little buzz when we come home and we watch 2B movies. Exactly. Right? And I talk I'm... about banging your friend Dorman. <laughs> He's still, oh, he's still with his wife? As far as I know. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. All right. <laughs> what about your cousin? He's single yet? <laughs> Definitely not. Poor Scott. If he ever gets married, I'm just going to be going through being like, all right. <laughs> Who's beggable at your wedding, Scott? <laughs> which, which, one of you, which one of these guys are uh, are on, on limits? I know. It's a, it's a short list, though. In all fairness, it's a short list. Because who I really want to bang is Tim Davis. Oh, man. He posted a video of him and his brother and fucking bite my fist. He tagged me in it. And I was like, you need to warn me before you take pictures. Like, they're fucking hot. And then, like, there's a beautiful young woman that's in the video briefly. And I'm like, oh, is that your brother's girlfriend? Like, is this Australia full of beautiful people between you and your wife? And he's like, no, that's my sister. I'm like, what did you do? Have the most beautiful fucking family? Yeah. That was his fucking sister. I know. (laughs) Ben, Tim, don't let the guys we know know that that's your fucking sister. Shit. Like, I, say, shit, I didn't even know he had a sister. No, isn't that interesting how he doesn't talk about his family? Hmm. hmm. Fascinating. Hmm. 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 And on his and, latest... Sorry, go ahead. And I was going to say, you know, he doesn't talk about his family to the man that he says he loves and that he's all wounded because he calls me a traitor, but yet he's never told me about his family. Hmm. I just don't think your guys are that serious. Oh, I'm a, we're as serious as a heart attack. I, oh my, oh my, that's that's that is serious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like fuck him and his brother are fucking hot. I was like, god damn. He's like, oh, we gave a threesome. I'm like, I could barely look at you two in a video. You think I'm confident enough to take off my clothes <laughs> with both of you and and try to bang you at the same time? I appreciate your supporting me, Tim, but, you know, I don't know. I don't even know if I can go to Australia anymore. If I do, I might just have to avoid seeing Tim, because I just don't know if I can handle, <laughs> like... Well, with him calling just me too... traitor, I'm for sure avoiding his ass when I go to Australia. He's Hurt so bootylicious for me, baby. Well, yeah, fuck, who cares? It's all it's all over once you get into the bedroom, Scott. Honestly, that's just foreplay shit. You know, and then calling and stuff. You just gotta be more open-minded. Oh, don't worry. I'm open-minded. I'm gonna donkey punch him. <laughs> You're gonna get some drop bears on him. That's what you're gonna do. No, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna all we're gonna all react Wolf Creek. <laughs> I'm gonna yes. play what's his face. What's the killer in that? Mick something. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, Mick I Taylor. Mick Taylor, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. At least I think that might be the actor's name. I can't remember. Oh, I can't. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna play him. That's that's who I'm gonna be. <laughs> you guys could be the victims since I hunt you down. 
<laughs> hungry like a wolf and we'll sing that song throughout it that's right come in next year 2024 straight to shutter kind of compares to some of the other shit that's been dropped on shutter as of recently honestly what a fucking slow year for shutter we'll get to that though we'll get to our 2023s and our like back to scrape in the bottle of the nail guys <laughs> yep this is this is the episode of mediocrity when it comes to our newer watches. So basically a dummy uh, horror of dummies episode. Dummies of horror? Dummies of horror episodes. I can't even get the name right. So who the <laughs> fuck am I? So anyway, I, I was saying Scott. So this is how bad this week is. So last week, Scott and I, I don't know, Scott and I talked about whatever we talked about last week. Monday hits and I'm like, hey, dude, we got to record. He's like, no, no, it's not this week. I'm like, yeah, man, like it's this week. We got to record. Well, we don't got to. We choose to because this is our labor of love. Anyway, and he, I'm like, have you watched anything? He's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> All right, let's let's watch some movies, and if they don't completely suck, we'll tell the other one to watch it. And we'll see how that goes. And we did pretty good for that yeah. being the goal. <laughs> yeah, between the two of us, we got nine 2023s, and I think I've watched one, two, three, four, five. Six of those nine. Yeah, and there's some on here that you have watched that I have not. So you have a nice little variety going on. Um, there's one on here that I wish I had got to you in time, but I didn't. And you watched it. Uh, the, the anthology one. Oh. <laughs> we both we both were suckered in by the anthology. We were like, ah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. It was, well, it was exciting because I was thinking it was like, Oh shit, the first anthology I've seen this year. I got I can add something to the, you know, category. And... <laughs> oh, oh my, this is not going to do anything for the well, anthologies the... I've seen this year. <laughs> and the sad thing is, like we'll get to it more, but like I looked when I brought up the list just so I could add my movies to it. I'm like, oh yeah, I watched that, didn't I? What was that about? Shit. (laughs) You know what's going to be funny? We're going to hit the end of the year, right? And that's when all the good shit's going to come out. You know what's going to happen? Fucking November, December. Fucking Erica's going to come over and be like, oh, baby, it's so nice to spend this weekend together. Be like, yeah, we got to watch 2023's, Erica. (laughs) (laughs) There's like at least 40 we got to watch now. (laughs) She's like, oh, okay. Sit down. <laughs> Look, Heather and I have to record Fighting Nightmares. We have our end of the year awards. The most important award show oh, ever. Absolutely. Fuck the Oscars. <laughs> Scott and I have to give our opinions. So definitely. I hope Erica knows what she signed up for. This is very serious business. Serious. Extremely. Extremely, extremely serious, serious, right? Um, side note about wrestling. So I was watching Wrestling with George last night. Now, I make fun of House of Black and I call them Ink Master Shop Wars. And I do that mostly to get under Rob and Scott's and Tim's skin. Mostly because, like, we just bully and tease each other. I haven't shared with George my thoughts on House of Black. The theme music comes on. All I hear from upstairs, not those fucking guys again. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, see, I'm not the only one who finds them House of Snooze. There's at least (sighs) one other person. One other person. Because you rubbed off on George. I did not. I did not rub off on him. I'm pretty sure he can think for himself. He is his own person. He is no, his but... own person. I have no control over him at all. When I come out there in May, George and I are having a talk. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to be like, they're boring, dude. I don't, I don't understand why you like them. <laughs> and here's the thing. I don't actually hate them. I don't. They're just not for me, but I can understand they're a draw. Though the cloud last night, holy fuck. What a, what a dippity do depressing depressing fucking crowd yeah it didn't seem like they really oh, got they didn't really get into it until like the uh, jeff hardy appearance and yeah then, that was uh, like the highlight it's like our horror movie watches this week. yeah i'll say and then the <laughs> keith lee and uh jericho match that seems to be the only time the crowds were really into anything so for everyone here that watches wrestling this episode's going to be like that too because the reason we have to bring to the table besides maybe one or two are not overly exciting i don't know there's some good indie shit i shouldn't say that there's some good indie shit but i feel like it's indie shit that you and i appreciate but besides that one dude who told me i don't watch enough movies um other people probably wouldn't appreciate it as much as we do i don't know what do you think do you think other people like indie movies like we like indie movies oh yeah well i mean besides like day billy and people like that yeah, I was going to say, there's obviously the uh, crowd we talk to with the podcasting community. There's a lot of them that dig into the indie stuff, like Venom and all that. And yeah. obviously Mark Nato, who watches every fucking oh, thing. Yeah, Mark Nato for sure. And uh, 
and even, you know, as much as we tease him and pick on his taste, Tim Davis does watch a lot of indie shit, too. He does. Well, also, he watches lots of indie porn. It's true. He's really exactly. into that, yeah. But, um, um, yeah, like, but I will just say, like, yeah, there's only two on here I would definitely recommend, and a third that I'd be like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, see, watch out, Erica. November, December's coming, especially if I come out there, and the three of us are just going to watch 2023 horror movies. <laughs> We're going to be like, Erica, Lord. this is very serious. We need to do our list of awards. <laughs> we have our, no. like, our little pencils, and you and I are like rating the activity. That'd be hilarious. That'd be really funny. I was like, but to be, to be fair, though, uh, this weekend, the next weekend, should have uh, at least two bangers in the theater, and that will be uh, Renfield and uh, Evil Dead Rise. Yes. <laughs> Fucking thank God. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Evil Dead Rise, I am the most excited for. Like, I think that's the film I've been looking forward to, all, like, my most hyped film of the year. But that's because, you know, my love for the Evil Dead franchise. I, I know. And honestly, I'm not overly excited for either of those films, but they're, they look better than some of the shit we've dealt with. Honestly, when Monday comes, the week that we're about to podcast, and Scotty and I are both like, oh shit, man, have you watched anything? <laughs> no, I haven't watched anything. <laughs> And we know this because we talk like every day, but yeah, the reality hits so and we realize that we have to double down. Long gone are the days of 2020 when there was literally nothing to do and all we did was watch horror movies, um, no matter what they were. Yeah, no, no kidding. Though, right? I do have to say uh, there is a trailer for something that I believe is coming out like soonish that I'm intrigued about called uh, The Last Voyage of the De- of the Demeter, which is uh, a chunk of the Dracula story, but it's done by the uh, director Andre Overdahl, the guy that did uh, scare, uh, Scary Stories Still in the Dark, which I'm still waiting the for the sequel. Yeah, and then Autopsy of Jane Doe and uh, Troll Hunter and those movies. Like, So I'm excited for that one because I, like, I didn't know he was doing that. So seeing the trailer for that, I'm going, okay, yep. Well, that gives me hope. Um, you know what also gives me hope? Doodle Edmund, who was born two weeks ago. I got to get him into horror movies. For Dude. sure. Absolutely. As a newborn child. Maybe I'll start with the Serbian film. You think that's fair? 100%. Just kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Solo. Solo, right? Or Martyrs. Maybe throwing some Megan is Missing. Maybe some Suicide Club just for some good fucking measure. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that damn movie, oh, I was so excited to be like, I was scrolling through Tubi and I'm like, oh shit, Suicide Club's on here. And I was like, sweet, I'm going to save it to my list. Came back a week or two later, it's gone. I'm like, damn it. Are you I still have not seen kidding it. me? Oh man, you got, it's a sad film though, Scott. I will be real with you. It is a, it is not a happy, feel good film. I know you could probably assume it by the title, but it yeah. is not a happy, don't well, watch it if you're looking for something feel good. Well, and I knew about that movie all the way back in the MySpace days because uh, I used to put like horror movie death compilations on your MySpace on my MySpace page. You know, for us old fogies that joined. Oh man, media MySpace. <laughs> and uh, one of the one of the death scenes was that subway station scene in the very beginning of the movie. So I was I like, know. "What the fuck is this movie?" And then I just never been able to find a copy without having to pay money for it. It's like the boys in the trees. It's like that's my movie that I'm like right. Honestly, first thing I'm going to do when I get off the plane in Australia, after I keep telling him how hot he is and staring at the ground and trying to make awkward conversation, I'm going to say, oh, Tim, can we watch The Boys in the Trees, please? <laughs> because I feel like that is the only way I'm going to watch that fucking movie. Yeah, no shit. Honestly. Fuck it. I can't even rent it. I can't even rent it. Like, how, 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 why? Honestly, they've done a good job of making this movie, like, hard to get. Like, I'm, I'm really feeling the, the the draw to try to get this movie. Yeah, I'm looking now. Yep, it's not even on Amazon to rent. Wow. It's not even on Amazon to rent? Hold on. I'm just responding to a message. Sorry. I usually wouldn't do this online. Well, that's not true. I usually do do it, but I'm doing it quickly because it's important. So it's on Amazon to rent for you, but not for... Oh, fuck off. It's on... You're looking at movies right now. That's like the same thing. Yeah, only but we're talking on. about... The, we're, but it's looking into this movie, Missy. Hey, my name's Guy. You know, I, I think you need to remember you you were lost to the wild. Do you know where you were in for the last year and a half? The Upside Down. And I went in and I got you. I'm basically like 11. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but I'm like the uncork version, so I'm like 12. <laughs> Oh, good lord. <laughs> now, what's the movie that always does a knockoff? Asylum. That's who always does a knockoff, yes. right? Like Transformers and Transmorphers. 
Yeah, I just looked at Boys in the Trees on Letterboxd, and for America, it seems to be in iTunes, Google Play Movies, and YouTube, and that's it. All right, let's see where Boys in the Trees is in Canada. I feel like nowhere. Oh, wait. No, United States only. Huh. Wow. Yeah. I See, I'm going to have to come to your house to rent it to watch it. Right. My dog just let out the nastiest fart right beside me. Oh, my dog's been doing that for a about a month honestly, now. honestly, stinky bum bums. All right. Speaking of stinky bum bums, complaining about Boys in the Trees, Suicide Club, other movies that are fucking made in 2016 and 2001 because we don't want to talk about what we watched. We've really sold everyone on it. But you know what? I'm going to start off because this film actually wasn't that bad. If you enjoy indie filmmaking, I do recommend this film. Scotty, did you get a chance to watch this one or no? Uh, yes, I did. Awesome. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. This movie is a 62-minute runtime. First off, let me congratulate an indie filmmaker for making their movie a fucking hour long. I'm actually going to give a round of applause. You can't hear it right now, but I'm clapping. About fucking time someone didn't skin him a rink. I'm looking at you. No one needs to see your indie film for two hours, okay? An hour is sufficient. Who is following you? Three friends on a backpacking trip find themselves stalked by a mysterious individual recording their every move. This is definitely an indie film, but I enjoyed this movie. Very basic premise. I cared enough about what happened to the characters. I was invested in it, and to be honest, I was pretty happy about the ending. I thought they used their budget well for what it was, and I think for all low-budget indie films I've seen, this is a one to follow and go, this is probably what you should do. What do you think? you didn't like it i didn't mind it's it's a five out of ten for me like it's it was an easy watch but where you were saying like you felt for the characters i had no sympathy for these characters i hated all of them except for i think the one girl that was just the one girl that was not the uh feminist far leftist crazy psycho protester that's like just going nuts and being like way over dramatic or the social light that's constantly posting on Facebook that I always can't stand. Those Look, I'm right here. <laughs> but like, I didn't care for what happened. To, I didn't care what happened to any of them characters and like, but this, everything else that happened in it was decent, but the characters <laughs> just definitely brought it down for me. Well, that is fair. So it's a low budget film. It is available on the 2B. Um, you can find it on Google, Voodoo, YouTube, Microsoft Store, and Amazon Video. All right, and I will bring in the next one. Uh, let's see. Oh boy, I also gave this one a two out of five on Letterbox. But uh, this is the one we were kind of mentioning earlier: Dark Lullabies, an anthology by Michael mm. Col Colombe. A thrilling mm. horror anthology by Michael Colombe <laughs> to tuck you in and rock you to sleep. <laughs> that's that's the synopsis um rock you to sleep yes because it's gonna put you to sleep because this was freaking boring i <sighs> like you know there's usually decent at least one one or two stories that i can find in any anthology and i'm like okay that's decent enough or whatever this one had potential for that but every story that i was starting to kind of get interested in abruptly ended you didn't like the elevator story i thought that was good if i did i don't remember it the guy doesn't let the chick in the elevator. Okay. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. Meh. It was... <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, what about the chick with the laptop? Don't remember that one either. Did you watch this movie? I did, but... uh, Voodoo. Thing... Do you remember Voodoo. that? Voodoo? What? Voodoo. You didn't watch this movie. You are a liar, liar, pants no, on watched, fire. Uh, no, there was a uh, one with a ghost during Halloween. Yeah, that, that was the second one. There was a werewolf story. Yeah, which was good. That one I thought was okay. The trick-or-treating one I thought was decent. Um, but what about the first one? It was about Voodoo. Yeah, that's the one that I remember ending just abruptly. Yes, it did end abruptly, yes. I don't remember the voodoo part of it now, but granted, this was the first That was movie. the whole basis of it. Yeah, like, this was the first movie I watched, like, right after we recorded, so, it, and, and like I said, this movie didn't bring anything to the table that was, like, memorable I'm for shaking me. my head. I, I feel the opposite of Scott. I don't think this movie was great, but I at least remember <laughs> the fucking stories in it. <laughs> I think that there were some short films in here where the directors for those short films had potential and the writers had potential. 
Um, there's a story about an elevator situation where a guy doesn't let a woman in an elevator and something happens. I think that director has good potential because I think that was a good story. Um, I think the trick or treat one has that director has potential because I think that was a good story. The werewolf story. I think that director has potential also a good story. I think this was a good collection of people who are doing their first short film in a lot of cases, and there's potential. Would I say it's great? No, but I would say that, you know, there could be stuff happening down the road. It is available for free on Plex. So if you have a Plex account, which you can get free Plex accounts, they're great. They just have commercials, like, yeah, well, like similar Tubi. to Tubi, right? Um, it is on there. If you're an aspiring filmmaker, I think it's worth a watch. Um, if you're an anthology, really hardcore anthology complete, completist, like you watch all of them, then I say you watch it. But this is not definitely not going to be something that you would see on like a Shutter anthology. <laughs> it's not up there. No. No, uh, like I say, very forgetful for me. Obviously, if I can't remember most of the stories, but uh, yeah. the next one is you. I have not all seen right. This one. Um, inside, right? Yep. Let me see. I pulled off my letterbox. Sorry. Now I got to pull this back. You haven't seen Inside? I thought you watched it. Let me double check if I did. It's another it's one. The I one don't with remember. William Defoe. No, I did not get a chance to watch that one yet. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be careful what I say then, because I think you'll really like it. And, well, or at least enjoy it. Inside is a hundred and five minute runtime, a solitary exhibition. An art thief becomes trapped in a New York penthouse after his high school's A-wire. In prison with nothing but priceless works of art, he must use his cunning, his cunning and intervention to survive. So this has a 3.0 star rating. It has William Defoe in it. And he is basically acting by himself the entire time. This is a very artistic film, though. Think Castaway, only in a New York apartment with high-end art. I enjoyed it, but it does drag. A 105-minute runtime was probably a little too long in the tooth for this film. But if you like solitary horror, you like William Defoe, you will enjoy this and a slow descent into madness. This movie is available on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, YouTube, Microsoft Store. I would say it's worth any price that you pay if this sounds like your thing. And the movie is called Inside. Yeah, because this is one I definitely did want to check out. I just did not have the time. At yeah, <clears throat> that is fair. I think it's it's long, Scott. I'll tell you, it is a long one. Yeah, well, the next one I'll talk about was a theater watch, and by God, it was under two hours. In fact, it was only 93 minutes. Bring back that runtime for theaters, please. So this movie is uh, 65, and it stars, uh, what's his face, uh, Adam Driver. And the tagline is, 65 million years ago, prehistoric Earth had a visitor. The synopsis is, 65 million years ago, the only two survivors of a spaceship from Samaras that crash-landed on Earth must fend off dinosaurs and reach the escape vessel in time before an imminent asteroid strike threatens to destroy the planet. So obviously this happens right around the time that the dinosaurs go extinct and all this. This was fun. Um, it lacked a little in story and focused more on like the action that was going on in the like the whole situation, which I'm totally fine with because this was a better Jurassic Park film than most Jurassic Park movies because like the dinosaurs were always a looming threat. They were on the screen quite a bit. Um, how would the how was the CGI? That's always a beef people have. Uh, the CGI for this looked really good. Oh yeah, um, nice. The design choices for some of the creatures just looked a little weird, but I think they may just been trying to make their film stand out from Jurassic Park. Like they're what I would assume is their T Rex had bit longer and muscu more muscular arms. Also has been hitting the gym a little bit more than the other exactly. T Rexes. <laughs> so it looked a little more little little more strange from what we're used to, but like it it worked. And like Am Driver does a great job. The little the little girl actress that is with him does an amazing job. Uh, her name was Ariana Ariana Greenblatt, I believe is the one. Because yeah, there's two girls in this. But uh, yeah, I thought they did a great job. They had good chemistry together. There was a lot of good action. Uh, like it's not really scary, but this also just kind of like you know fits along the lines of Jurassic Park in the way, like the original Jurassic Park, where it has a little bit of 
horror-ish elements because you got big dinosaurs chasing you and stuff. And I just had fun with it. Like, it's nothing amazing, but it was fun. So would you recommend it to people? Yeah, I think this would just be an easy watch. Uh, and I think you would be just highly entertained. And it's now out of theaters or might still be in theaters, but like few screenings but it's yeah also it wasn't in many theaters out here i think like two it, it i don't think it had a good showing like i don't think it had a lot of people watch it kind of thing yeah probably not but uh now it is available to rent on amazon itunes google play and voodoo to buy and then to rent itunes google play voodoo and spectrum on demand nice well would you say it's worth like a 5.99 rental because that's probably what it's going to be going for at least yeah, I would say it's definitely worth the five ninety nine rental. Um, if it's like the early access twenty nine ninety or twenty dollar ninety nine cent rentals that you know we get sometimes nowadays, I wouldn't pay that much unless you had a bunch of friends over. And you're all splitting it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's a sign right there. Well, I'll watch it. I like dinosaur films. They're my, they're a guilty pleasure. Yeah, I'll say they're fun. I even liked. Uh, um, I really liked the stuff on uh, like King Kong versus. Uh, Godzilla. Like, I even yeah. like that movie. I thought it was cute. Which is saying something because you were not looking forward to that. Film. No, I liked it. It was real emotional. Like, I really didn't I didn't know whether King Kong was going to help Godzilla, and then he did, and I felt that was very emotional. So, um, <laughs> the movie I'm going to talk about is Bunker. So, this is a 109 minute runtime. It's filmed very interestingly. It's almost filmed like it's a stage play, and I really dug that about this film. I think this film is going to be a sleeper film oh tim gave it two stars he probably didn't understand it that's probably why <laughs> um i understand tim did they use big words <laughs> i'm just kidding I'm just oh kidding. damn i'm just kidding i like i think it's a good film tim and i rarely see eye to eye on a film so it's not shocking that's not true sometimes we do but that's fair that it, this wasn't for him i completely understand this was definitely to me felt like, or like a stage play and was paced like one and if that's something that you don't enjoy this wouldn't be something that someone would like right. so it's a hundred minute 109 minute runtime i think i said that already trapped in a bunker during world war one a group of soldiers are faced with ungodly presence that slowly turns them against each other um, I really enjoyed the acting and the characters in this. I thought everyone did a really, really fucking good job. Um, I bought into each character. I bought into, um, the battalion as a whole. I thought the ending was emotional. Um, I don't know. I really, I really did dig this, but it is very much a war piece. Um, you do have to like war movies to like this with a little bit of horror. This is no, um... What was it? Dogs of War? Oh, Ghosts of War. No, the one with the uh, the werewolves and their soldiers. Oh, dog dogs. Soldiers. Sol dog soldiers. There's no dog soldiers or Ghost of Wars or anything like that. But it's a pretty decent movie, I think, anyway. Um, it is available on Vudu, Amazon, Microsoft Store, DirecTV, and Hoopla. Uh, I think it's worth a rental if you like war movies with your horror. If not, then I would say skip over it. And a rental, I would say three ninety nine, but. Hey, if you don't like war movies, this probably isn't for you. Yeah, this is one I plan on at least checking out, like, along, along with Inside. Well, we have a screener, so you should. Yeah, exactly. Because I watched the trailer for both Inside and Bunker, and they both looked uh, intriguing. Yeah, I I liked Bunker. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was really clever and good. I'm surprised Shudder didn't pick it up. It seems like a Shudder film to me, but... I mean, they still might. Yeah, they might. That's true. They might pick it up for next year. You never know. Yeah. Uh, so I will go on to this wonderful gem. So, you know... This, like I said, this has been, uh, this is going to be an episode of mediocrity with uh, watches for 2023 for me. And this one is definitely one of those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's uh, to be original, so that should tell you everything right there, for the most part. Um, it is called Safe Word. After eloping with her seemingly perfect boyfriend after only a few weeks, Colette realizes too late his intent is to control her completely. <clears throat> so this is a very sexual film and obviously with safe But is word. it sexual without being fully sexual? Like are they clothed? 
it's yeah it's, like i don't think there was any nudity in this like i think there was some like where they like assumed they were naked like you know you just like they didn't show any nudity but you could see like bare shoulders and all that stuff <laughs> whoa, 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 the shoulders there may have been like an ass shot i can't remember at this point but uh but yeah just like you know very sec it reminded me of just a very generic uh 50 shades of gray in a way oh and so like 50 shades of gray asylum Safe yes, word. exactly. And <laughs> like the character in the, the male character in this is a complete narcissistic piece of shit and I can't stand him and uh so he may end oh, up winning. What's Tim Davis doing in the movie? Oh, oh sorry, Rob Humphreys. Oh. Rob's See? like, uh yeah, because women should be kept with a safe word, Heather. <laughs> But yeah, this was very had a very lifetimey appeal to it. Mm. Kind of like a lot of the like two B thriller films that are out yeah. there. This, yeah, like it seems like their thriller category is very lifetimey, where their horror category seems almost sci fi channel ish. Yes, yes, that's um, a good way to say it. But it was an easy watch, but it is nothing I would recommend. Like it's just eh, it was there. It was like. Like I was saying, the narciss- narcissistic husband will probably get a uh, I hate you award for the someone I hate thing. Hey, that's a something. It must have been not that bad then. Like, just, well, just because I know those types of people and I'm like, oh, fuck that. Oh, you you know someone that was like that? Oh, so I know weird. quite a few people, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. You know, I'm right here, Scott. So, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're just wanting like unless you're Lance Lamford and his wife makes him watch it. <laughs> yeah, or I was gonna say like or uh, Lacey Lou who likes the uh, there you go likes the Lifetime style because she does like the Lifetime stuff, right? Oh yeah, she does. You're right. You're and right so in that she, statement. Her like she may like it. I'm not whether Dan would or not. I have no idea. But uh, you know, Lacey and Dan from Cut to the Chase give them their shout outs here. But uh, yeah, she might like it or at least be willing to watch it. But yeah, it's. A to be original, it's free, so it was one of those. Why not? Yeah, it's kind of how Scott and I get most of our dates. Ha! We're free. <laughs> Why not? We're there. Why not? Erica's like preach it, sister. Um, all right. So the next movie we're going to talk about is also a to be original. Sure and is. And made in Canada, Canadian sure classic was. right here. Mary F. Beep Kill. Mary Buck Kill. It is a ninety minute run. It's what I want to do to the horror for dummies, guys. I want to. I want to marry Scotty. I'm going to fuck Tim. I'm going to kill Rob. Actually, I'm going to kill Scott. And I'm going to fuck Rob. Just to prove that he has to fuck older chicks. Just to be like, see, now you finally beg someone your own age. Right? Um, <laughs> five estranged friends play a seemingly innocent game that spawns into something far more sinister than they could have ever imagined. Scott watched this, and I decided I would watch it too. Um... I don't know. I don't think it was that bad. I thought it was okay. I just thought the ending got weird. I was very confused by what happened at the end. I thought the one person that was the protagonist was no longer the protagonist. And the other person that was the antagonist became the protagonist. But yeah, like that was the only part I didn't really like. I would have preferred if the ending was not a happy ending, if you get my drift. Right. And they just went on to do what they were going to do. Um, some people stood out to me in this. Uh, one of the chicks I liked the most, unfortunately, died really, really early on. I think her name was Paige or Vicky or something. I thought she was kind of funny. Um, I don't know. I thought it was fine for a free Toby Tubi watch. I thought it was entertaining. I oh, uh, we got a new we got a new channel, folks. Toby. <laughs> Toby. <laughs> it was yeah, Toby, which is the opposite of Tubi. It's where all the worst Tubi films go. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that it was. I don't know. I thought it was okay. What did you think? Yeah, it was fine you know it's a five out of ten film for me like it was there um had potential but just kind of lot like you said lost it in the end um like i was kind of intrigued like once again this was kind of like sexy time to be with like this week's to be originals because like <laughs> there's there's like an orgy in the beginning type situation going on i'm going what the this isn't to be what the hell <laughs> no Right, but, so, but it was like the cheapest orgy ever. They all had lingerie on. No one oh, really yeah. saw anything. They just kissed. It was like, ooh, where's some cock and some JJ? <laughs> Where are the boobies at? Where are the asses Man. at? Come on. I fantasize about better orgies in my head. I would have a way better one with the horror for dummy guys. 
<laughs> Fuck this but, shit. But yeah, once again, this was free, easy to watch, just middle of the road. Didn't hate my time with it. Didn't enjoy my time with it. Just kind of like, it was there. Do you think people would have orgies wear condoms? Do you think they're all walking around with condoms on? I feel like that, that people are doing orgies are not worried about like doing it safely. I don't know. It seems like people that are doing orgies plan it ahead, so they probably do bring condoms. You think they all wear condoms, or do you think they all, like, because if, like, multiple people come inside you, how do you know which baby it is? I guess you have to get a DNA test. Exactly. What if the sperms merge together? To create the ultimate baby. <laughs> I got a horror movie right now. All right, all right. Orgy happens. Sperms merge together, and it makes evil baby that's angry that it came from a product of an orgy oh so uh freddy krueger yeah only it's consensual yeah that's not an orgy that's gang rape scott oh, yes. i don't know what you consider an orange oh, oh, that's consent. what i was hoping with tim davis and rob humphrey if you know what i'm saying consent scott i want them to treat me like put holes in me like swiss cheese <laughs> you want to act out how freddy krueger was made yes i'll wear the nun outfit oh you're such a horrible human being anyway mary fuck kill <laughs> I don't know. I I thought it was entertaining enough until the last little bit. So I don't know if I can strongly recommend it. It's on Tubi. If you also watch Tubi like us, it's not bad. It's all right. Yeah, it's it's there. Rob Humphreys, it's my number one movie of the year. You better watch it. You yeah, have to watch it, actually. Don't watch it, Rob. Don't watch this or Safe Word. I, I want you to watch it to see what I want to do to you, Scott. Uh, Scott <laughs> Rob. I want to... I, I'm trying to figure out which character I want Rob to be and which I'm going to do to him. I'm Rob, you're going to be the main character, and I'm the other chick. You and I are the two main characters in this, and I want you to watch this movie. And that's Rob, what I'm going to do to you, Rob. Rob Humphrey, I repeat. Scott's the gay guy. <laughs> super rich who yeah. reminds everybody how rich he is every five minutes <laughs> it's Rob, like, it's like repeat, magic. don't watch these movies they're terrible no but they're also them. on tubi yeah watch them rob and realize that scott is the gay guy who makes a lot of money and reminds us every five minutes Shit. just like i remind everyone that i'm going to europe wait you went to europe <laughs> and you and i are the main ones and tim davis is the slut that runs off and gets killed <laughs> Damn it, Tim. All right. I told you to keep Absolutely. your asshole closed. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I'm going to try to say this next one. I've had a hard time saying this name. It looks weird to me. Con. Okay, you say it. Consecration. Consecration. It just sounds so weird to say. Consecration. <sighs> anyway. It's a 90-minute run runtime movie. This one was made in Scotland. Oh. And, um... <laughs> Scott just took off his headphones. And he's leaving. <laughs> Scott, come back. Oh, for Gotta fuck's hear sakes. about this super, super different exorcism film. <laughs> yeah. Yawning because he's like hashtag over it. This is a 90 minute runtime. Bless be the curse is a tag. <laughs> After the alleged suicide of her priest brother, who's living with a bunch of nuns, okay? It's all these nuns. And this priest. It almost sounds like a rooster with the hen house. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. I thought priests all lived together and nuns all lived together. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, anyway. So Grace travels to the remote... Isn't that why it's called a convent? Yeah, nuns? right? Anyway, Grace travels to the remote Scottish convent where he fell to his death. Distrust, just trusting the church, the church's account, a.k.a. the Catholic Church... She uncovers murder, sacrilege, and a disturbing truth about herself. Oh, man. Some of the ratings for this film. Three and a half stars. Two and a half stars. One and a half stars. One and a half stars. Two and a half stars. Um, I don't know. If you want to see another demon movie based in Scotland in the Highlands, check it out. That's about all I could say for it. <laughs> it is pretty much your basic paint by numbers exorcism demon possession catholic church is an asshole movie um if that sounds like something that would appeal to you then i would say watch it if not i would say skip over it i believe it's coming to shutter i could i was like yeah i, I think, think so. i think this had a limited run in theaters or maybe it had a theater run because it's available now on itunes Google, Voodoo, DirecTV, and Spectrum On Demand. Okay. So if for some reason you really like exorcism films and films about demons, watch this. If not, and you're Scotty and you're fucking hashtag over it, 
don't waste your time. You're probably not going to overly enjoy it that much. Yeah, say unless something is in the film that would I go liked towards one of the Mary awards. Mary fucked Kill more than I liked this movie. Yeah. But I was going to say, like, the only reason I would watch this is if you told me, hey, there's a award-worthy thing in here for our end-of-the-year stuff. Unless we do an award of hours I wish I could get back, then no, I don't <laughs> think that this is one that, that we would say. Now, we saved the best for last. Fuck yeah, we did. All right. <laughs> so this one is a sequel to what I consider kind of a hidden gem of 2021. Um, and was, I think it was, yeah, Brandon Orlick found it on Tubi and highly recommended it to us. Uh, the original, or the first film was called Horror in the High Desert, and they released a sequel, uh, that came out this year, and it is now on Tubi, and it's called Horror in the High Desert 2, Minerva. Not, not High Desert. Not High Desert. High Desert. Not, not High Desert. Uh, But the tagline is, no one just disappears. In 2018, a string of tragedies unfold in the high desert of northeastern Nevada. A woman was found dead, and another would vanish along the same stretch of a remote highway. Could these events be linked to the infamous 2017 disappearance of outdoorsman Gary Hinge? Um, Yeah, so I really dug the hell out of horror in the high desert, the first one. And so I came in with this one kind of hoping for more of the same, like, you know, that same feeling. And yeah, to my surprise, this movie fucking delivered. It was. Sure did. It's done in that documentary style form, the mockumentary style format, like uh, the original or the first film was. And just had a lot of people they interviewed and talked to just kind of build up this myth and story about this disappearance of this woman. And fuck, was it creepy. This one was legit creepy. It was creepy. good. And I, if I remember correctly, it had a very short runtime. Yeah, 76 minutes. So, you know, this director knows what they're doing. And apparently, he is also in the works of making a part three. So this is going to be a trilogy. Awesome, huh? Fucking yeah. awesome. I love when I see little indie films like this, like the little indie films that could. You know, just knowing what they're working with. Coming out with good stuff. Tim Davis probably won't like it. Um, I can't remember what he thought of the first one. He hasn't watched the first one. Oh, he hasn't? He, has, he hasn't watched this one. I'm sorry. He hasn't watched the second one. And Rob Humphreys hasn't watched it either. The Hump. The Hump Dump. The Hump, hump and Dump. dump. Um, Dave Bailey, check this out. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I think Bailey will for sure like it. So those that is our 2023s that could check out the last one on Tubi, Horror in the High Desert 2. Not to be confused with Horror in the High Desert, too. Um, that is available on Toby. Uh, for older watches, <laughs> Scott watched a really good movie. So I'm just going to quickly go through mine because, as always, him and Erica have shown the quality that Toby has to offer. <laughs> the film I'm going to talk about is not nearly as impressive. Actually, I forgot to mention something else here. Did I tell you I saw Pay the Ghost a couple months ago? No, you I forgot about that. Yeah, I watched Pay the Ghost finally. Nicholas Cage is an interesting dude. He's such a good actor. When yeah. He, like, when he, he wants to he be. He just does some fun things. Right? When he wants to be. I watched a movie called Killer Party. And this was a... I, I've never heard of it from the from the 80s. Have you heard of it? No, until you had brought it up to me. 1986, 91-minute runtime. By the end of the dance, some of the sorority sisters were dead on their feet. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Uh, Three sorority pledges are tasked with well, ensuring that the gals of Sigma Alpha Pi throw a killer party in an abandoned fraternity house. Unfortunately, Benfield Spirit decides to take the killer litter, the killing literary. Um, this is a fun one. If you like 80s horror, you like a little bit of April Fools, mix it up with a little happy birthday to me, maybe throw in some hell house, you know, a little razzle dazzle. I think you'll dig this shit. What's that other one that you really like where the lipstick is used? Barbara, um, what's your girlfriend? Barbara. Are you thinking Night of the Demons? Yeah. I'll say Barbara Crampton wasn't in that. That was Linnea quickly. Sorry. I lose track of your girlfriends. All right. So Night of the Demons thrown into this as well. It's it's a fucking fun little 80s film. I say you and the missus watch it sometime. If she likes 80s. I don't know. Is Erica into 80s? Yeah, she, I, I think she just likes all horror. Like, oh, like so, a normal like, person. Yeah, yes. just in general. Well, if if you guys are ever in the mood for some 80s. Oh, we're and an 80, in the mood, yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, you are. Um, but if you're in the mood for some 80s, you know, 
old school watching. I, I think this one's fun. And if you like those type of movies, you'll dig this one too. So check it out, peoples. It's a good time. Yeah, this is one I definitely want to check out. It sounds uh sounds like one of those 80s gems. that I Oh, it's a gem. It is actually, for sure. All right, I'm pulling up this. Oh, yeah, you are. All right. So, you know, Eric and I do our To Be Tuesdays, though. We did a To Be Monday this last time just because I was busy on Tuesday. But, uh. Yeah, he was out with his other girlfriend. <gasps> oh, whoops. Ooh. Oh, God. Should have I... told Erica online. Uh oh. <laughs> his other girlfriend <laughs> noticed his <Right>. grandma. <laughs> I was saying, yeah, grandma was giving me shit. That, that's her different story. Oh, uh, why? What did you do? She's just silly, old lady. And she, like. <laughs> She's like, you keeping yourself pure for marriage, Scotty? <laughs> she probably thinks that. She knows you've been married before, right? Like, like... Yeah, but the look, like when I tell her things, like she thinks I'm all innocent. And when I tell her things, she just has the <sighs> reaction. And I Remember the picture that. you posted of her when she saw the chicks coming in with their prom dresses on? That shit was hilarious. And her face was like, where's the rest of their outfits? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Her face was mortified. I loved it. Oh, man. Anyway, sorry. Back to your killer. All right. Your, so, sorry, your movie. Uh, the film that Erica ended up choosing, she said she came across it, watched the trailer, and said, oh, God, this will be a fun one to watch with uh, Spanky, as she likes to call me. <laughs> um, mm. But uh, she just knows that I'm into the silly, silly-ass horror films as well as I am into the more serious ones. This one <laughs> is... More serious films. Yes, yes. But this one is called Cute Little Buggers. Uh, was released uh, 2017 and has a runtime of 108 minutes. Uh, the tagline, out of this world, out of control, and out to get you. From the director of Dead Time and Crying Wolf comes cute little buggers. Will you let them take your women? It's Gremlins meets Hot Fuzz set in the English countryside. Uh, no. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, will... When hostile aliens crash land on local farmland, the villagers at the summer ball get suspicious when young women start going missing. The villagers soon band together around our hero Melkor to fend off the invaders and bring back peace to the sleepy English countryside. B-movie laughs in this creature feature from director Tony Jopia. The only other person that has watched this that I follow on Letterboxd is our good old friend, Donna Nelly, and he gave this three and a half out of five stars. So I was like, oh boy, I can't wait to see what this is like then. And so one thing this film or this synopsis did not say is that two aliens by the name of Ernest and Brad, <laughs> which is just hilarious, um, find Earth and say, hey, we need to bring back... Uh, more species to our planet, so let's impregnate this planet's women. How are we going to do that? Well, let's send down some drones that uh, will find one of the innocent-looking species on the planet and use them. And they come across rabbits and somehow transform the rabbits into killers that are uh, will swallow women whole and bring them back to an impregnation chamber. And if they run into any males, they will just murder the fuck out of them in gory hilarious ways yeah like um, i'm watching the trailer this doesn't actually look this bad it looks like that rabbits movie only better oh like night of the lepus yeah yeah like i mean the cgi for the rabbits is ridiculous but yeah. like yeah. It, it almost it's it's almost like that was done on purpose to fit the film like because it just fits with this film um but i found it to be fucking hilarious it had some gore had plenty of nudity like it was just ridiculous story. Like you knew, you know, the people that made this film knew what they were doing and knew what type of film they were making. Very just ridiculous and out there, but a lot of fun. Uh, the only thing I would complain about is the runtime of 108 minutes is a bit long for something like this. The joke does kind of start to run stale a bit. Mm. Um, I would say this would have done better at maybe an hour and 20 minutes. Like, cause you know, it's very just funny and just silly. But also, like I say, gets kind of stale after a while. But unfortunately, Erica passed out halfway through it because she had a long day. So I I was watching the last half of it by myself and like teasing her and trying to wake her up. And... Whoa, she fell asleep during this Oscar worthy film. I'm surprised. Oh, she falls asleep all the time. But usually it's with one of my favorite movies that she falls asleep on me and I have to pick on her. Oh, it's because you maybe need to make her Gremlins. stop watching Gremlins for the fateenth fucking billion times. Hey, we haven't watched Gremlins yet, but I said, don't you dare fall asleep on me when we do watch Gremlins. I don't care how many times you've seen it. You're like, stay awake. <laughs> 
I will poke you over and over and over again. Oh, man, she might like that shit. Maybe she'll be like, mm, yeah, Scott, I'm so tired. <laughs> I hope you don't poke me again. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, I would say this movie was definitely a lot of fun. I give it like a three out of five on Letterboxd and. It's free on Tubi, so if, any, if anybody wants to watch something silly, this is definitely very entertaining. Nice. Well, I'm glad that you brought that gem to the table. So I decided to do something a little different with our What's New. And I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but under Shutter, you can go to Series, and they have podcasts. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. And they have one called The Darkest Night. They have three seasons of it. So I'm watching I'm listening to season one and it's like a story. It's like a horror story. And I got to tell you, it's pretty fucking good. The voice actors in it are good. They they do a great job of painting it. The one I'm listening to right now is like experiments in this facility mixed with ready or not mixed with like evil corporation it's really fucking interesting the episodes are about 37 minutes in length they do get shorter as the seasons go on so i feel like as it went on maybe they got feedback that they should make it shorter and they started having these podcasts in 2016 honestly quite enjoyable um i'm looking forward to listening to more so if you have shutter it's The Darkest Night, and it's under series, and I recommend listening to the first season. I'm digging it so far, and I'm interested to where the story's going to go. Awesome. Yeah. As I always like hearing about like your recommendations for certain podcasts, because I end up giving usually giving them a listen after you bring them up. This is a good little story. Like, it's strict storytelling, right? Right. So I think you may dig it if you're, like, cleaning around the house or something, and you just need to put something in your ears. That might be something to listen to. Hell yeah. I will definitely do that. Hell yeah. And... I really didn't have anything for what's new, so uh, I just figured for this, just because everybody knows how big of a freaking Gremlins fan I am, that I would give my quick thoughts on the Gremlins Secret of Secrets of the Mogwai trailer that just dropped mm-hmm. yesterday, uh, which would be Wednesday. Like, so you, what is uh, so it would be the thirteenth of April, um, or sorry, twelfth of April. But uh, it's a cart. It's supposed to be a cartoon series that HBO Max was producing and was going to release while the Warner Brothers merger happened, and now it's un- going to be released under the streaming service Max because uh, they bought out HBO. Um, they finally released the trailer. Uh, I've been hearing about this for a couple of years now, and I wasn't when it first came out. Like the news came out, I was not really excited for a Gremlins cartoon. Because I've wanted, you know, a true Gremlins 3 live action film. And so I got, you know, me being the Gremlins fan I am, I at least have to watch the trailer, see what I think. And the trailer looks cute and looks like it'll be entertaining. I just, uh, there are a few things that I'm nitpicking on. Uh, One of them had been answered for me, thankfully, so that's been cleared up. But uh, one of the things I'm very nitpicky on is that in this trailer, this series takes place in 1920s. And this little boy gets introduced to the main Mogwai, which we all know as Gizmo. But it's 1920s, and Gizmo introduces himself to the little boy as Gizmo, which most people probably wouldn't have a problem with this, but being the fucking nerd that I am for this series, Gizmo did not get his name Gizmo until uh, till Billy Peltzer got him as a gift and his dad had named him Gizmo because of all the inventions his dad makes. So the fact that in 1920s Gizmo is using the name Gizmo just kind of rubs me the wrong way and makes me feel like, okay, whoever made this series must not have really been paying attention. But the thing that is weird is it's produced, it's uh, produced by Joe Dante and Steven Spielberg as well as a couple other people. So I'm like, well, how did you guys let this go through? Maybe it's the whole in joke of, you know, the whole three rules don't make sense. Maybe that's just kind of another in joke with this is, ah, who gives a shit about the lore? The lore is already kind of screwed up, but that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And then, uh, what was the other thing that I had told you guys about? But, uh, oh, like, and then, yeah, Gizmo just kind of speaks gibberish, except for, like, his name. And I kind of just chalk that up to maybe he just hasn't learned the English language yet. Because, obviously, like, he speaks it in a very cute way. But yeah. the, I guess Howie Mandel did not come back for this, which I thought he would come back to voice Gizmo, but he did not. So the guy that's playing Gizmo in this 
just sounds off to me. But, you know, once again, you know, like if they made a Gremlins remake, I doubt they would have had Howie Mandel come back as Gizmo. So, I mean, I'm I'm still of that mindset that I'm still going to give this a watch and judge it for what it is, like on its own. But, yeah, I thought it looked cute. The animation looks interesting. Looks definitely more kid-friendly. But eh, I, I'm a little disappointed, but at the same time, I kind of expected that. Like, because I'm just... Because I don't know how long, how they're going to be able to drag this out as a series. Well, I think your criticism is fair, Scott. Like, if you are going to do a series, like, they should make it the... If they're worried about the familiarity of not knowing, like, it's Gizmo, right? Then just do Gizmo's origin story as a title. Yeah, like, Origins of Gizmo or something. Yeah, or, or Secrets something of like... Gizmo. Right, where, you know, and do some kind of prelude at the beginning of before he was Gizmo, his story began, Yeah. right? So there is some easy writing that can be done or storytelling that can be done. Exactly. That can help make it a little bit easier. So I do understand your critiques. I do think they are fair. Yeah, it's not like I'm watching it going, oh, they said, like, Gizmo said his name in 1920s. Fuck this. I'm not watching it. This is a piece of shit. Like, no, I'm still going to give it a chance because, you know, I'm a sucker for Gremlins and it is my favorite favorite movies of all time. So I at least want to give this a chance and hope it's still good and entertaining and I can just forget, look past that. Right, right. I think that's a really good point. And at least you can try and see how it goes, right? Yeah, exactly. If like you it, hate it, you can blame it. You can go on Facebook and other people will support you. Right, exactly. Oh, there's already a lot of people going... <laughs> This shut it. Why is this a cartoon? I'm like, eh, yeah, I don't want it to be a cartoon. I'd rather be a movie, but yeah, who cares? Um, uh, you know, Scott, you gotta get really mad about it. I know, because you know, no one comes up with anything original anymore. The A's is the most important thing in the world. Gosh, it's so funny that you should say that, Scott, because our out of the dark topic is your passion project from something that annoys you. What is it, Scott? <sighs> yes. Tell me, so... tell me the story. So, people, we need to have a sit down. We need to have a little powwow here and have a chat. Um, horror icons from the 1980s. Are they really all that? Come on now, people. Like, So, I wanted to bring this up in our Out of the Dark segment because I have seen this a lot lately of people just saying horror is not like, they, like, not like it used to be because they uh, you know, had all these horror icons like Freddy and Jason. But what do the 2000s and late 2000s have? Blah, 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 blah. And what? For, yeah, it's like, um, they don't need, the thing is, 80s had icons of everything. That was just a part of the decade. You do not need horror icons to make horror movies good in the modern age. There have been a lot of amazing one-off films or sequels that just don't have a specific named killer. Yeah, there are a couple that have tried the franchise thing, like, you know, uh, Art the Clown for Terrifier, uh, Victor Crowley for Hatchet, and stuff like that. So we do have, like, lesser-known icons in this modern age. But the thing is, people, the 80s just gets its dick sucked, and I'm just so tired of it. Like, there were some good movies, and like, obviously, yes, Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers and Pinhead and Chucky and all the fucking icons of that era are awesome, but they have all get run into the ground with their films and consistent continuous sequels. I just don't have, like, I just don't have these nostalgia factors, even because, you know, I grew, I was born in 81, so I grew up through the 80s, and, like, my most impressionable time would have probably been the 90s. I don't have nostalgia for anything back then. Like, yeah, there was cool shit back then, but I wouldn't be saying to this day, like, oh, it's so much better uh, back then than it is today. Like, no, like, especially in horror hell no like i i will say this right here right now the 2010s to the 2020s probably the best decade of horror in my opinion it has had so many amazing freaking films and people yeah. always shit on modern horror and it just uh, rubs people shit on horror. modern horror that watch five horror movies a year exactly those people i know they don't I, and i don't care what this sounds i know you don't know what the fuck you're talking about because you haven't watched anything if you tell me that no good horror movies have come out in the past 10 years i know that you just sit at home and watch friday the 13th on repeat with prom night yeah like that's and that's fine like that's your thing that's okay but you can't comment on something that you don't watch I am not a regular. So I cheer on the Buffalo Bills. Complete side thing here. I cheer on the Buffalo Bills. They're the only NFL team that's close to me. So I watch them in major events, right? Like I'll watch the first game of the year. 
I'll watch the Super Bowl if they make it or the playoffs. I am not an expert on NFL football. So I don't say how NFL football is because I watch a handful of fucking games. Right. So when people tell me that something isn't good and they don't watch it or they watch a handful of something, I don't really take your opinion with a lot of value because all you're saying is a handful of movies I've seen aren't good. So that means everything in that decade is not good. Exactly. And I just, I don't know. I just feel like that's a paintbrush that you shouldn't be painting. And I get why the people, why people amplify the eighties. That is like the boom of when people horror movies were cheap to make. We talked about this all the way back on episode one, where it was cheap to make that people realized that there was money to be had. Shutter's gone on over this. Yep. That's why they were popping out like crazy. Like, let's be real here. If it wasn't that time when Jason was involved in Friday the 13th, Friday, Friday the 13th part two. And if that was to happen at a different era, would have it had the success that it did? I don't think so. Yeah. There were some great slashers in the seventies, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Black Christmas. Like there is now Texas Chainsaw Massacre did breed sequels, but those sequels are fucking confusing. <laughs> like they don't follow any kind of like at least the Friday 13th films you have. Jason is consistent in all of them. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, well, except for, I guess, technically the fifth one, but the concept of him and the evil of him is consistent. Um, and yet again, that definitely has its place in horror history. And I think we should be thankful to the eighties because of that. Yeah, exactly. But when people start saying it's the best, so I, I pulled up some articles. So the greatest horror villains, and we're going to go through because people will say, well, no one's as recognizable. Okay. Number one on here, Ghostface. Oh, wow. Now, I am not the biggest fan of Scream anymore, but I'll fucking tell you something right now. From 1996 to this year, 2023, Ghostface remains one of the most popular, recognizable fucking horror villains. Scream is a mainstream film. Even my friends who don't know horror know Scream. Yeah. They've had big names in those films. They've been they they're revisiting it with the mo those new ones and they're rebuilding the franchise. That is a recognizable horror icon. I can go Google Amazon right now things for Scream and get a billion different shit if I want it. Right, right? recognizable. Next one, Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Both Tim Curry and the most recent one. Mm -hmm. Again, recognizable. People know who Pennywise is. Even non-horror fans do. Why? Because when I went out and you went out as those two fucking characters on a ghost tour, everyone knew who we fucking were. Yep. They all got it. <laughs> it is well known. Next one. Freddy Krueger. That's technically started in the 80s, so I'm going to skip over that one. Hannibal Lecter. Anthony, Anthony Hopkins fucking nailed this role. Yes, people know who he is. I know that people don't always associate this with horror, but again, 1991. Annie Wilkes from Misery. Yeah. Well known. A lot of people fucking quote this movie. Tons of people quote this movie. True. Right? Uh, let's see what else. Candyman. Fucking Candyman. Another horror icon that came from 1992. Let's see. Buffalo Bill. Silence of the Lambs. Cenomorph. Oh, no. That's Alien Resurrection. Nancy. This is a good one. Nancy Downs from The Craft. I yeah. would argue that for young ladies in my age group, she's extremely recognizable. People see her Faruka Balk and they go, oh, The Craft, The Craft. She was the chick in The Craft. Yeah. Right? Like that movie was very, very influential. Let's see what else we got here. Max Caddy from in Cape Fear, Robin De Niro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Count Dracula. Absolutely. Lestat. Sadako Yamamure from The Ring. Original in the remake. And Nurse Brenda Bates from um, Urban Legends. Yeah. Yeah, quite memorable, absolutely. And Tiffany from uh, F Tiffany from Child's Play. Yeah, Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky. Chucky. And... and then finally, to kind of knock it off here, the fucking Leprechaun, 1993. Yeah, well, I was going to say, and then, you know, in modern day, we have Sam from Trick or Treat. Yep, Sam like, from Trick or Treat. Not, oh, also not everybody was that? The, the Lady Van Tassel from Sleepy Hollow. Oh yeah. See, right. I wouldn't have like I wouldn't think a lot of people would know her, but yeah, I guess no. that makes sense. But like someone Jigsaw, a lot yeah. of people know who Jigsaw is. Uh Annabelle, the creepy doll. People remember creepy dolls. Yeah. I just think that slowly but surely I would argue that Art the Clown 
slowly and is becoming the same thing. So yes, I understand that Jason and Freddy stand out, but I would argue that Ghostface is right up there with them. That yeah, stuff exactly. is extremely well known. Then that has streamed over the past 20 years. We got 20 years of Scream. Actually, we have more than 20 years of Scream because that film came out in 1996. Yeah, so we're going on to 30 years. Yeah. When was the last time a really good Friday the 13th movie came out that people didn't shit on? Let's see here. When was the last Friday the 13th movie, Scott? Was that the Michael Bay film? Yeah, I think that was 2009, I want to say. So since 2009, we haven't, besides fan, I'm not talking about people that make their fan films. So let's see here. Yeah, Friday the 13th, 2009. So we have from now, and he wasn't in the 1981. Well, I guess technically Jason was. That's who the icon is. He comes up at the end. Yeah. So we're looking at 1981 to 2009. So the way I'm seeing it right now looks like Ghostface has been in mo more movies. and can, Well, not more movies, but it's spanned the time frame more than Nightmare on Elm Street. Or not, uh, sorry, uh, Friday, Friday the 13th. Because bulk of his movies were in the 80s. And that's it. So if yep. it's that good, shouldn't it continued on? I know there's well, like rights issues. Yeah, I was going to say, there is the lawsuit that. that kind of stopped everything. But, um, but you know, the reason I even brought this up was just because, like, we don't need horror icons to make, to, like, label a decade good. But I yeah. think that, what I, I agree with you, Scott, but I think people also need to understand that icons come from every single fucking decade. Like, yeah. every single decade will have their icons. And yes, some icons continue. I know who Anthony Perks like Psycho. I understand Norman Bates. That's from the '60s, for fuck's sakes. Yeah. I wasn't around in 1960, but I know what it is because it's so famous and well known. It doesn't mean that it's not great. I'm not saying that Jason isn't great or Freddy isn't great or exactly. all like Pinhead isn't great. Like all this stuff is great. It's just stop pretending like it's the best thing and things aren't good anymore. It makes you sound like an idiot. <laughs> Right. It makes you sound like you haven't watched anything in the past 30 years. And I don't know. I just find, like, if you don't like it, say, I don't dig it as much. It's not for me. But box office numbers have shown and people's purchases have shown that shit is just as awesome. And, like, the Friday the 13th movies and, like, a lot of the Friday movies weren't that great. Yep. Like, I will, like, you know me. I love the Friday the 13th movies. But, like, I can admit they're not that great after a certain point. Well, and they're great for what they are, you know, yeah. like for what they are, right? And and it's not saying you can't enjoy like Jaws. We have a friend that loves Jaws. Jaws is a great film. And Jaws and is it's... probably one of the most iconic out there. Absolutely, right? Only had one, like, well, four films, but like one film that everybody remembers. Everyone remembers and has spawned a lot of shark movies off of that. It definitely set the bar. But that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy other creature fucking feature films. <laughs> Like, right. You know, there are like I um the one with the alligator where they were in the house last year or a couple of years ago. Was it swim? Uh, no. Uh, what the fuck was that called in Florida? Yeah, because it had a swimmer. She was like a special like like professional swimmer. But yeah. What the fuck was the name of that movie? I really liked the one with Blake Lively too. that shark movie. Crawl. Yeah, crawl. Okay. And Lake Placid, Rogue. I liked Rogue too, actually. That was a fun. That was a fun film. Um, but like, you can have other creature films that you enjoy. I don't know. And there's also more variety now. Like, I know in the '80s they had a whole bunch of cheesy shit that came out, and there was only so much stuff that made it to the theater, and there was a lot of released on demand. I agree. I don't think you need horror icons, but I also do think there's icons in every single every single generation. Like every single generation has them. Yeah, and granted, these icons, besides like say Ghostface, probably won't ever be as big as like a Freddy Krueger who like spawned like a TV show and showed up on talk shows as Freddy Krueger and shit like that. And, yeah, but that but was I mean, also that time frame. Yeah, exactly. I was like, like that, that would work now. Yeah, you don't have talk shows now like that. You don't have. Like, and I think that's the other thing, too, is people don't get that time has moved on. Yeah. Like, what was big in the 50s and what worked in the 50s, like, you watch these old black and white movies. They're fine for when they were. I was having, actually having a conversation with a friend of mine, and we were talking about the crazies. And I said, and he and he likes the original. I'm like, fuck, the original is boring. Yeah. God, it's a chore to get through. The 2010 one is a lot better to watch and a lot more entertaining. And he's like, oh, well, I really like that. And it's because he watched it as a kid and that's his thing. And that's, and that's okay. But like, it's also a different time frame for when certain things work. 
the marketing campaigns that worked for Freddie wouldn't work now. It's just like you could never do the marketing campaign that they did for the Blair Witch Project ever again. Right, exactly. That would never like, work for found footage again. It was a like, one-time thing, right? Like the 80s had a different way of marketing things. Nowadays, a lot of things are marketed due to social media. Yes. So it's a completely different style of marketing. It is. And it's not to like, I don't know, my biggest thing and will always be, it is okay to have your favorite decade. It is okay to have your, like, obviously have your favorite thing. But to walk around and say that everything else sucks, it just seems to me like such an un educated opinion like it just like so everything else that's ever been made since the 1980s is horrible you're gonna right. tell me there hasn't been one good horror movie out of the thousands and thousands of thousands that have been made like that just seems silly to me exactly. it just seems impossible to me so yeah i agree scotty like mm -hmm. yeah like i say like i will say 80s is probably my second favorite decade but 2010s is my number one now right now at this moment because they yeah there was a lot of amazing horror films i'll be honest i don't i don't rank decades i don't really care yeah too. um probably my my least knowledgeable is the 70s and and backwards and i am trying to change that um i do have a close friend who watches a lot of older films and he watches very little newer films so as much as i criticize him for not watching newer films, I I do have to own that, you know, my horror history besides the big ones in the 70s is pretty, pretty jaunt. Now, mind you, because of our challenge of first time watches only, I have definitely seen a lot more. Like, I've never seen any giallo giallos until like this, right? And there's right. a lot that I've watched because of that. There's a lot of like little hit, like <laughs> good old snaky bender. I uh, yeah, one yeah, of my fangs. one of my fangs, one of my my guilty go tos. Like, so I am just as guilty when it comes to older films. I definitely do not have the knowledge. I find some of them boring. But that being said, if we didn't have those films, like we didn't have House of Wax with Vincent Price, there's a lot of other films we wouldn't have today. Exactly. You know, if we didn't have Nosferatu, there's a lot of other films we wouldn't have today. Those films paved the way and those stars paved the way for what we have in horror now. So I am trying to be a little more open minded and go back in time. And that's my challenge that I'm aware of and my handicap in the sense that I don't like handicapping golf, you know, right. like where you don't know something and you have to kind of educate yourself on it. Yep. So that's where I'm trying to be a little better. I wish other people when they criticize other things did the same, like at least try to watch a product or watch a movie or watch something to before you make your judgment call, like actually watch it. Exactly. Cause, right. Yeah, because I'm the same way. Like my uh, lack of knowledge kind of goes from the 50s and before that. Oh, and, so you're deeper than mine. You at least go to the 50s. Yeah, just because I was raised on a lot of the 60s stuff with uh, like in the late 50s stuff with Vincent Price. Yeah, you like a lot of Vincent Price stuff. That's true. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I grew up with a lot of that stuff, but, like, yeah, like, the uh, 50s and before is kind of, like, my blind spot that I've, you know, tried filling in here and there. Yeah, yeah, and that's all we can do, right, is slowly try to educate ourselves, but, uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought this up, Scott. I think it's an important topic to think about and to think about where our own blind spots are in horror, too, right? Yeah, exactly. Where we make judgment calls and... I don't know. I hate when anyone says everything sucks or yeah. like when people say the music of this generation sucks. Like, I just think it's so immature. Like, exactly. just because it's not for you doesn't mean that it sucks. You just don't have to like it. Like, why can't whatever happened to just letting people like what they like? Right. You know, like you can say it's not for you, but you don't need to be criticizing the other people that do like it. That's my point, I guess. Um, but yeah, like Scott and I have the right to criticize all the 2023s though, because we're special podcasters. So that's different. <laughs> we're, we are special. We're super privileged. So <laughs> thank you for sitting with us as always. We hope, I don't know, we gave you something to watch or listen to or something to check out. Um, thank you as always for listening for, I just repeated myself. <laughs> thank you. Really. Thank you for listening. Uh, <laughs> you can find us on the Legion podcast network. We're under the kill the cast feed. Uh, welcome back to Carrie, Jerry, Kenneth and Jay. Um, I almost said their names is always one there for a second. Yep. They are back. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say welcome back. And they are back to releasing episodes. 
So they're heading towards episode 100. I think they'll be coming up to that soon. So that is very exciting. I think they've been at this now for five or six years. It's been a while. I think they were podcasting. They, they are the reason I got into podcasting. I'm wearing my Kill the Cast tank top right now as we speak. You never forget where you came from. Yeah, and I was going to say, and Jerry helped us get this show going the way it is. And mm-hmm. I also got to say thank you, Jerry. You hooked me up with an amazing microphone. Unfortunately, I am not using it just yet because I have to get new headphones because my headphones do not work in my computer when this microphone is plugged in so i gotta get a new set of headphones but once that is in hopefully uh smoke show here will have better sound quality well you'll sound as good as you look oh yeah fuck yeah but yeah we have very much killed the cast to think we are coming up on episode 80 uh we will definitely continue to episode 100 and then we'll see where we go from there but um we've come from little podcast and bibbas to where we are today and we definitely have a couple of people like dave c jerry um uh, benham uh dave bailey lance lanford phil ray um, Tim Davis. Tim Davis. Rob and Humphrey. I want, oh my gosh, I want to shout him out. He sends, he does reviews sometimes. He's on our page. And I feel like I've just forgotten his name. I'm such a dick. Jason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, who yeah, Jason, really... uh, Jason Black. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, Jason McClure as well. Yeah. James for, Tongan. Yes, for supporting us all this time. Um, some early adapters. Yeah. Tim was one of our early fans, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he listened on episode, he's, he listened to us episode one. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to believe how far we've fallen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, very grateful. So I'm really happy for the guys to be hitting their episode 100. So please check them out. Um, as always, there is the Legion Patreon. And I'm not sure if Scott wants to keep doing the what are you waiting for. We do this all the time. Scott, do you want to let it go? What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? I've never given this up. So that's the sign up for Legion Patreon today. It is, I think, a $3 a month commitment. You get promo codes and other early access to shows um, and join us on the Legion Network. We're all a bunch of just amateur podcasters living our best fucking life. As always, we like to shout out friends of the show. We like to shout out The Horror Returns with Lance Lamford and company. We like to shout out the Psychosemantic Podcast, the Cemetery Gates Podcast, the Exploding Heads Podcast, the Acorus Dummies of Horror, and is it Dummies of Wrestling for Dummies? What is it for the wrestling? Yeah, dummies of Wrestling as well. Dummies of Wrestling as well as, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Mm, am I forgetting a this, show? Uh, this Horror This Horror Life. life? This Horror Life and Slasher Radio uh, with Mr. Rob Humphreys. <laughs> Rob. So feel free to check out those awesome shows as well. Um, oh, and the Slumber Party Massacre. I'm on that too, in case you want to listen to me with a bunch of bitches talk yeah. about shit. You can listen to us there. Until next time, hopefully we'll have more 2023s to talk about. And what do you have to say to the good people, Scotty? Yeah, thank you as always, everybody. Hope this episode was at least entertaining, even if there was just a lot of mediocre films in our 2023s that we discussed. But, you know, it's always just fun just shooting the shit, and we're just glad that you guys support us and enjoy our show. Uh, So thank you all, as always. And until next time, kitties, unpleasant dreams. See ya!